from the News Channel 5 Network. This is the Plus Side of Nashville. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Plus Side of Nashville. I'm Tawanda Coleman. Thank you for joining us. You know, Nashville is home to a lot of talented artists and many whose artwork we would consider an honor to hang in our homes. Well, now that's possible and we don't have to buy the piece. You can borrow it and we'll explain and tell you how later in the show. But first, addiction. It is a disease that impacts the lives of women of all ages, races, gender and profession. It yes. does not discriminate. If you're a woman struggling with addiction, no matter what stage you're in, there is help. And yes. here to tell us more about Mending Hearts, an organization that helps women struggling with substance abuse restore their lives, is the president and CEO, Trina Frierson, along with Betty Mason, who is a Mending Hearts board member. Yes. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. It is so wonderful to have you both here. We do know that addiction affects all of us, yes. no matter what your background is addiction can affect you. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be great to sort of start off by setting the scene. Trina, you know firsthand, uh, you're the CEO of this organization, you started it, but you know firsthand about addiction, don't yes. you? Yes, yes. And, and, and really this mission is built off of my personal back of being in addiction, in and out of jails, incarcerations, right here in our local city of Nashville. You know, a 17-time felon, you know, and so the beauty of uh, Mending Hearts today is that it have a lived experience CEO. And so my goal, my mission is not only to help rekindle relationships with individuals and their families, but the beauty of it is, is that we want to live as other people do. And we want to remove the stigma against women and their children and families. And how do we do that? Oftentimes in addiction, we're looked upon as this bad person. And we have made a ton of mistakes. But the beauty of it is we do recover. And there are programs and services such as Mending Hearts, which is a full continuum of care, meaning that we can do a social detox, a medical detox. We have a 28-day residential treatment center. We have an intensive outpatient program that we run three different courses from. We're beginning a partial hospitalization program, and we have a peer program. And what our peer program is, individuals who come through the program, and they stay, and they're there six months or longer. They have the ability to stay up to two years. These people come back and give back to the women who are in the entry level of the program and they support that system. And so my goal is always is that not only do we teach one, each one teach one, but let's give back. Let's give back to those. And so I believe that we were all put here for a purpose and that we didn't get clean or we didn't get above the line just to be above the line. We've got to always reach back and help somebody else. And so our pay it forward system within the program is phenomenal. There are other sister programs out there that do recovery. We need all those programs. But our long-term care facility has been effective for us, and we have over a 77% success rate. And so we're ecstatic about it, uh, being here locally in Nashville for 20 years. Um, I brought in the first woman on my couch, uh, and from there, we now have a 110-bed facility. Uh, we staff over 32 uh, staff members. Uh, we have an active board. Uh, we want to thank all the local foundations uh, who have supported us from the National of SAMHSA. We want to thank, you know, we just started this new uh, movement. Yeah. And it is not totally geared towards mending hearts. It's created by mending hearts. Mm -hmm. But it's about the women we serve and the women around this country. Because addiction has no simple face. It does not discriminate. It doesn't care about your economic status. It doesn't care about your status as a CEO or the President of the United States. It comes through the gene of the family. You know, to want to I didn't go in the store to buy a Coke. I didn't go in the store to buy an addiction. This is not something I purchased for me, but I have the gene. And so now I need to know how to treat it. And the same way we want to treat cancer, sickle cell, let's treat addiction. But first, we've got to get at the front of it. And how do we do that? We treat the woman. Why the woman, Trina? Well, if you think about it, no one's here unless they come through the canal of the woman. Right. You're absolutely right. And so for every woman, whether it's mother, daughter, sister, 
when a woman stands in the shoes as a family member, she's standing as a wife, a sister, a mother, and everybody brings their problems, their success. They bring it home to mom, sister. You know, think about your brothers when they need advice or they want to talk about something. They usually come to their sister. And so we stand with everything on our shoulders. And so with the social stigma, which is control by our society, with that being weighed on us, it's harder for us to go address the needs of addiction. So we don't want to go get treatment because we're looked on as weak. We don't want, we think that if we go in there and discuss our sexual abuse, if we're going in to talk about the trauma, the childhood trauma, and yet the disease alone, because I wasn't strong enough to hold it down, you know, let alone we have a pandemic of addiction with this opiate in here. Let's think about the mental issues that come along with it. Let's talk about the mental issues that are so heavy with the addiction now that it draws people to using a substance use. And so, like, we're, we're excited about the movement. And, you know, I couldn't do this um, without the support and volunteers of the city. And our supportive team back at Mending Hearts is phenomenal. But we have a board that is phenomenal, that's embedded, that is, like, just running the race to make this move. And so this movement is not just for Nashville, right. it's for the country. And so we hope just, you guys lit the city bridge for us this weekend. It yes, was beautiful, yes. had a great turnout. And like, we're just hoping next year that it's not only in Nashville. We've had a couple of calls this weekend yeah. that people are looking for it in Alabama, St. Louis. Um, and it was somewhere as Atlanta. Yeah. And so we're hoping that this movement is contagious enough yes. mm -hmm. that we can remove the stigma and that women can go to work. And if they say, hey, I can't work overtime because I need to go to my support meeting. Listen, we need to support them in that. If you want a stronger employee, be a better employer. Yes. Let's support our women. And you have the support, as you said earlier, too, Trina, of an amazing board. Betty, who has been a faithful, faithful, faithful. member of your board yes. uh, for, for a while now. What does it mean for you to have an organization like Mending Hearts out here for those women who may be experiencing addiction? For me, I can, I can base this on having a daughter who struggled with addiction for five years. Um, it was in the it, you know, and goes back to stigma and shame and the fact that people are not educated about mm -hmm. the disease of addiction. It's substance use disorder. It's a disease, and it was hard for me to find help for her. Mm -hmm. uh, people shunned her. People wouldn't let her get in the car with them to go to school. The shame was so thick. It was amazing. And when, once I met Trina, and it was only two months after my daughter died, and we were both speaking mm -hmm. at an event at Vanderbilt sponsored by the Tennessean, that we became inseparable. <laughs> She'd lost her mom, I'd lost my daughter, and we just filled that gap for each other. And the more I learned about mending hearts, the more it, it you wanted to be heart. a part it of it. It mended my heart. Those jagged edges started to smooth because I saw a way to help other women that she was had worked yeah. so hard on for over 19 years. Mm -hmm. She worked, has worked and worked. And so I felt honored, but you don't say no to Trina. <laughs> when Trina asks you to be on the board, you say, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so here I am, and it has really, it's healed me, yeah. you know. And But what I'm getting at is that if I'd known about, and ifs are bad, nasty word in the world of grieving parents, but that would have been where I would want my Katie to be. Yeah. Because two years is, you, you need time. Your brain yeah. doesn't heal in 30 days. And you can't give a child a manual, a how-to manual that you give adults that are coming in. You can't give it to anybody. And she specializes it. Every woman is an individual yes. with an individual issue. They didn't just go out yesterday and say, and neither did Katie, I think I want to be a heroin addict. No, no, no. No, that wasn't it. There was an underlying issue, and you have to peel the layers of the skin back and get to that and try, try hard as you can, people. If you see something odd going on with your child, to get to the bottom of it before they do turn and focus on drugs to numb it. If you are struggling with substance abuse of any type, contact the folks at Mending Hearts, and Absolutely. I know they will definitely be there to and help Tawana, you. that's with or without the ability to pay, because we know that paying for treatment service is a real true issue in our country.